So what is Puerto Rico? Because it's not its own country, but it's not a state either. So it's in this kind of limbo where it belongs to, but it's not a part of the United States. Officially, it's a commonwealth. But more and more Puerto Ricans are agreeing that's just a fancy way of saying colony. I think that Puerto Rico at this point uh, is a colony. America has a colonies problem. But how is that possible? Because in the 50s, the US announced to the world that Puerto Rico had been decolonized. It was a monumental hoax. And that Puerto Ricans would now rule themselves. Creo que no engañaron al pueblo puertorriqueño. There are some who believe it was all a lie. Others defend the Commonwealth status. You can't just say that didn't happen, it was a fallacy. But if there's agreement on anything, is that what's happening right now is not benefiting Puerto Ricans. This is the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. Today, Puerto Rico has come into its own, a real democracy. If you watched the previous video, you know that in this series, we're talking about the status options for Puerto Rico. We already covered independence. In this video, we're talking about the middle option, but the middle option is really a range of options. Let's talk about what we have today. That's the Commonwealth. In Spanish, the official name is Estado Libre Asociado. We call it ELA for short. And we can't talk about the ELA without talking about Luis Muñoz Marín. Muñoz Marín was born the same year the U.S. invaded Puerto Rico, 1898. He was the son of a famous politician, and he went into politics too. He became a senator in the 30s. What's interesting is that at this time, Muñoz Marín supported independence for Puerto Rico. But this was also the time of the Great Depression, and Puerto Ricans were suffering extreme poverty. At the same time, that militant group I told you about in the video about independence, the nationalists, they were clashing with the U.S. government in Puerto Rico. There were a series of killings that prompted a U.S. senator to say, if they want independence, let's give them independence. And he proposed a bill, but some Puerto Ricans believed that bill was too harsh. One of the things it proposed was a full U.S. terror from Puerto Rico shortly after it became independent. And the island was already struggling economically, so that would have been a huge hit. And this is where you see Muñoz Marín take a different path from his party because his party still supported the bill. They believed their freedom from the U.S. was worth it. And the saying became, independence even if we starve. But Muñoz took a much more practical approach. He supported independence, but not if it meant falling deeper into poverty. So instead, he used his connections with the U.S. government, at the time the FDR administration, to bring New Deal money to Puerto Rico. But that didn't come without strings attached. Now it was the 40s and World War II was in full swing. The U.S. wanted to use Puerto Rico to set military bases. It was during this time that the Navy took over the island of Vieques. Years later, when the JFK administration was considering forcibly removing the entire population of Vieques, Muñoz Marín strongly advised them against it. But he also said if there was a referendum for the Navy to take over the island, he would do everything in his power to get a yes vote. So that gives you an idea of the kind of relationship he had with the U.S. government and why some Puerto Ricans thought he was a traitor. But to suffering Puerto Ricans who heard his promise to address poverty and improve their quality of life, he represented hope. And in 1948, he became Puerto Rico's first elected governor. Under Marine, the Puerto Ricans now have as much political freedom as any state in the Union. He was also responsible for industrializing Puerto Rico. It's a miracle of modern progress. He supported policies that invited U.S. corporations to take advantage of tax cuts and cheap labor. And in return, Puerto Ricans would get jobs. It's meant new jobs and new wealth for Puerto Rico. It also meant huge profits for U.S. corporations and problems for Puerto Ricans down the line. Industrialization brought the collapse of the island's agriculture as Puerto Rico went from self-sufficiency in food production to almost total dependency on the U.S to feed itself. During that period of time between the New Deal programs in the 70s, there was an obvious improvement in the quality of life of everyday Puerto Ricans. There was better education, better health care. The life expectancy of Puerto Ricans went up from 46 years old to 72. But these programs also increased dependence on the U.S. 
So it was easier to make the case that separating from the United States was not in Puerto Rico's best interest. However, it was the 50s and it was no longer cool to own colonies. So the U.S. was starting to feel the international pressure regarding Puerto Rico. So along with Muñoz Marín, they came up with a solution where they wouldn't have to give up Puerto Rico, but also didn't have to make it a state. Today, the flag of the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico waves proudly beside old glory. And this was how the Estado Libre Asociado, or the ELA, was born. Puerto Rico would remain a territory, but also have its own constitution and gain significant autonomy. This is the part where some people believe the U.S. only pretended to give up power. Representations were made even before the United Nations that somehow Puerto Rico was now fully self-governing. But fundamentally, the relationship of colonial subordination remained intact because Congress kept full sovereignty over Puerto Rico. In other words, Congress delegated authority. That didn't mean that Congress couldn't take back that authority he had delegated, which it actually did. Congress took it back in 2016 under President Barack Obama. People of Puerto Rico need to know that they're not forgotten. You've heard me talk about this before. This is the moment the Oversight Board was created. Puerto Rico was a massive debt it couldn't pay back, and the U.S. took away its power to make its own financial decisions. Now a group of people appointed by the U.S. would make those decisions for Puerto Rico. So the argument is, if Congress could so easily say, you no longer manage your money, we're going to pick a group of people to do it for you, then Puerto Rico has always been a colony, and the Commonwealth was a fallacy. But Armando Valdez disagrees. The fact that we are facing very serious challenges, uh, both economically and politically at this point, doesn't mean that when it worked, it didn't work. It worked. Uh, the, the Commonwealth status worked for decades. We went from being literally the poorhouse of the Caribbean to being the largest economy in all of Latin America at some point. But now, five years after the border was created, hundreds of schools have shut down. Puerto Ricans pay more for basic, unreliable services like water and electricity and the population is in decline as tens of thousands leave every year in search of jobs. And Puerto Rican politicians might disagree on many things, but when it comes to the board, across parties, most agree it's colonial. So how do they plan to get out of it? That's where it gets tricky because even within this middle option, there are different options. Let's talk about two. Someone to rescue the Commonwealth, so to speak. They believe the ELA was wonderful at some point and that through negotiating with the U.S., it can benefit Puerto Rico again. Others say, forget it. It was never great. We need to throw it out and start over. But now from a position of power, they believe Puerto Rico needs to negotiate with the U.S. on equal footing and enter into an agreement of free association. Now, the main difference between these two options is whether Puerto Rico continues to be a part of the U.S. or becomes its own country. The way I see it is the difference between being someone's child or someone's spouse. As someone's child, you are entitled to certain things from your parents, like their last name. In this case, we'll say that's American citizenship. You're also entitled to child support, which in this case, we'll say it's federal funding. But in a parent-child relationship, it is the parents who hold the power. They have the last say. That would be Commonwealth. As someone's spouse, you can negotiate and agree to share certain things like a last name, money, resources. But when you're on equal footing with someone else, you can decide to walk away if it no longer works for you. In that case, Puerto Rico would have the freedom it doesn't have now, but it wouldn't necessarily be entitled to some of the benefits. That would be free association. And can you briefly tell me why that's not something you support? It, it implies being an independent country. The United States could back away from the pact. The United States could decide to lower the levels of, of funding for Puerto Rico. There are any number of, of issues that uh, would be up for negotiation that are not up for negotiation right now and that I think are very important for the people of Puerto Rico. Now, I'm going to make a quick parenthesis to say two things. Number one, that there's consensus that Puerto Ricans who are American citizens today would not lose their citizenship even if Puerto Rico were to separate from the U.S. It's more a question of what would happen with future generations of Puerto Ricans. And number two, that some believe the U.S. has a responsibility to pay back after all the ways it has profited from having Puerto Rico as a colony. 
but that's a conversation for another video. What's really important for people who want free association is sovereignty. So free association in that sense gives us the whole quantum of authority of powers to actually make our own choices. But sovereignty has become a dirty word in Puerto Rico. Politicians are scared to say they support sovereignty, and if they let it slip, it's used against them. This was the candidate for the Popular Democratic Party in the last election. El Lela hay que desarrollarlo. La soberanía que tú quieres imponerme a mí como etiqueta, pues no me la puedes no, no imponer, la pongo, no me vas a marcar mismo, con eso. La gráfica, no se la pongo yo, se la puso usted bueno. mismo. And that's because the word sovereignty implies separating from the U.S., still maintaining a relationship. But again, the fear is the possibility of losing some of the benefits. But those who do support sovereignty say it's the only way to decolonize Puerto Rico. They believe that the Commonwealth status, the ELA, shouldn't even be on the ballot the next time that Puerto Ricans vote on this issue. Realmente, yo creo que eso es un disparate. Porque si vamos a descolonizar, pues no puedes tener en la papeleta la opción de la colonia. But the leaders of the party that Luis Muñoz Marín founded still believe in the Commonwealth status. Qué bueno es el Estado libre asociado. Qué bueno es el ELA. Do you truly believe that through negotiations with the U.S that status can be improved to the point that Puerto Rico has true autonomy? I think it can be, yes. Because if not, what, what's the option? I mean, are we going to become a state tomorrow? No. Are we going to become an independent country? I mean, I, I don't see much support for it here. Frankly, I don't see much support for it in the U.S. either. So simply saying, well, you know, the, the, the Commonwealth supporters are happy colonials or, um, you know, we just need to eliminate all other options, get them off the table. I, I, I don't see where that gets us. There's also a generational divide. An older generation has stories of their parents or grandparents being lifted out of poverty during what they saw as the golden years of Diela, while the youth today has grown up seeing budget cuts and unemployment. But that's not to say that there aren't youth that still support the party of Luis Muñoz Marín. Meet Swanee and Eat. Tenemos que comprender que tiene sus ventajas estar aliado con los Estados Unidos. Swanee works within the party and she sees the division over the status question. Personally, she thinks the status can wait. Yo creo que debemos enfocarnos en desarrollar la economía del país para luego enfocarnos en temas de estatus. Mientras tanto, se sigue cayendo la economía y el país sigue sufriendo luchando por un estatus político que al final del día no hay ambiente para eso. In a way, what Swanee proposes is the way that Muñoz Marín managed to win elections in the 40s and 50s. His famous phrase was, el estatus no está en issue, or the status is not on the table. En cuanto se declaró eso, empezó una era de progreso muy rápido en Puerto Rico. Antes había habido un estancamiento tremendo. But today, some 70 years later, some Puerto Ricans feel stuck again without full autonomy and without full rights within the U.S. And you'll see in the next video why some believe the status question can't wait any longer. We're going to be talking about statehood, the pros, the cons, and why after more than 100 years, it hasn't happened.